Welcome back to the channel. We're going to be reacting to the trash fire that was the first episode of the Not So Erudite and Destiny led Bridges podcast. Let's see how DGG is faring after such a horrendous outing, is what I hear. So let's react to it for the first time right now. All right. So, first and foremost, um, I'm sourcing this off of a tweet because I have notifications on for Not So Erudite because I have a crush on her. And it says here, she says, lol, sorry if I seem melodramatic and vague posting. Context, an episode one of Bridges sucked and I need to tweak a number of areas to make episode two stronger. So think about that. Your inaugural episode sucked to your own even like you're just admitting it, which shows a little bit of vulnerability and honesty or maybe – it's a little two-faced because of the criticism. We'll check it out right now, though. All right, so first of all, look at this. Look at this intro. So this is just a bunch of montages. It's a little bit of a mess. Uh, the Ben Shapiro debate. So this is all Destiny, hardly any Kyla. Is Kyla an irrelevant side character to Destiny? To Destiny? Ah, uh, it seems like it, according to this intro. Anyway, let's see this intro, though. Oh, my God. Look, you have to understand. This Kyla chick is, like, pushing 30, from my understanding, but she's, like, a nerd. Now, this might have to do with the fact that she had a tumor in her ovaries in high school, okay? I just looked into this lore. It's actually really concerning. 10-pound tumor. Yikes. Anyway, let's see how she intros this. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode one of Bridges Podcast. I'm sure you're all so excited or not excited for this event. We're happy to have you. We are coming. Already horrible event. Okay, hold on. She says, welcome to the first episode of X. Hopefully so-and-so or maybe not. So again, why even put in that negative, okay? If you're friends with anybody who does this, you need to quickly push them off a building because realistically speaking, why is that even said? Uh, maybe you won't like this. No, just pretend. Pretend like you will like it. You will love this podcast. Me and the five foot six gremlin over here, the Gusano Destiny. Yes, he, the Cuban, he will uh, please you. He will not talk like some SSRI abusing autist. Instead, he'll actually be charismatic. In fact, I doubt that's what's going to happen, but at least lie to me. Uh, you know, make me feel a little excited, please. Not excited for this event. We're happy to have you. We are coming live to you with our first guest in Miami, Jeremiah <clears throat> Johnson. Hi. Thanks. For first of all, I don't even know who that is. Our first guest, Jeremiah Johnson. Who? And second of all, look at this slob. He's wearing a Japanese, like like one of those like white girls in a Japanese video game or something. Konami would have made in 2003, maybe. It looks like a Silent Hill knockoff shirt. And it's like this disturbing black eyed blonde whitish woman on like a printed t-shirt. It's disgusting. You know, if you if you have uh, fashion taste, what you're going to do is wear black long sleeve shirts that will accentuate your dark features. Or if you're this ginger's case, maybe wear an off autumn colored brown, disgusting mustard leather plastered leather jacket. Disgusting. I hate it. Pale skin, drab, horrible. We're looking at the aesthetic. Again, the way that he even introduces himself with no vigor, no excitement. So pathetic. Pisses me off. If I were in front of Kyla, I would make it fun. We're happy to have you. We are coming live to you with our first guest in Miami, Jeremiah Johnson. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Um Dude, only white people do this shit, by the way. Uh, thanks for having me. Hi. Dude, what? It's like self-aware, but also not. It's like dollar store, the office. What the hell are we looking at? And, you know, speaking of stuff that we're looking at that's disturbing, what is this thing in particular, hey? What is this destiny, like, anime dragon samurai looking apparatus? What the hell does this have to do with the podcast? I mean, that's just like, dis uh, disconcerting. I don't know. Uh, my name is Kyla. This is Steven. Hi, what's up? And uh, we're excited to talk to you about... Really? Really? Your first podcast episode? Hi, what's up? Really? Come on. Showmanship? Anything at all? And, you know, this is one of the biggest liberal people on the internet, Destiny, okay? That's how boring the guy is. Like, are you self-aware? And it's not even a thing of like, well, I've gained the system. I know exactly how entertaining I have to be. It's like just a little bit of life. You know, even if you're not trying to get clout because Kyle is supposed to run the whole thing, still put in a little bit of effort, please. It's such a defeated, like, vibe. I don't get it. Okay, so thus far, the first minute of the diatribe by this ginger has been so appallingly boring that I thought it's not going to be good content for the video. But the video is about how this podcast is terrible from the jump, so let's go ahead and include some of this. ...values that we have. Um, they, you know, work and, and help try to elect different congressional candidates and city council candidates and mayors where they're from. And so that's what the Center for New Liberalism broadly is doing, is advocating for kind of a center-left viewpoint. And I'm happy to get into exactly what that means because that's a very broad, generalized label. Um, but Look how unconfident his posture is hiding in his jacket because he's fat. And even looking at the way he talks, there's no confidence, no actual like exuding of any sort of vitality in the way that he speaks. It's an appallingly stupid thing to watch. 
And what's more is that the way he moves his eyes so frantically, you know he's on some sort of substance. And you got to ask yourself, get on some Adderall. Actually, get good, bro. What the hell is this? Bro on Ritalin. Like, actually do something cool, man. What the hell? That was a group that I founded just a few years ago. Um, that's uh, the short version of it, but I could get into more detail. What do you, um, from like an organizational point of view, are you trying to back candidates or something eventually? Or are you guys just trying to like advocate for policies on a, on a city level? Or what does that look like? Yeah, so it's funny. We started out as a 501c3. How could they think this is an interesting topic to really discuss? So this podcast is about bridges. Now, what is bridges? Okay, ideally, it'd be like a gossip thing because that's ultimately what gets views and what is entertaining. No, instead, let's talk about center left politics. No, 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 no. But okay, fine. Let's 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 play a little bit. Um, and our structure was that we were part of a 501c3, and so if when you're doing that, could you tell us what that is? Yeah, a 501c3 is a particular kind of nonprofit, right? And so when you are a 501c3, you cannot endorse candidates. The the benefit is that uh, your when people contribute to you, it's tax deductible. That's essentially the big benefit. Um, but you because it's supposed to be educational and tax deductible, you can't back specific legislation and you can't back candidates. Last year, CNL transitioned to being a 501c4, which means that uh, we can't okay. This is literally, and again, this is good information. Under like I know about this po uh, political thing because of uh, Turning Point USA is a 501c3 and whatever have you. So I get that already. But when it comes to the average DDG people, these subreddit like autistic dwellers of you know basically salamander colored idiots, these people are not finding this entertaining. And if they do, God bless them if they believe in him. Because the point is, at least for me, just as an outsider, what the hell is this? Okay, we're talking about nonprofit status and whether or not something is tax deductible. I mean, is this really entertaining? I don't think so. All right, folks. So I've literally passed through forty more minutes of this podcast. Nothing of note, terribly boring. I should be paid for this. Uh, but anyway, if you look here at the posters, again, so this was a premeditated set. If you look at the background, you'll see how glossy these posters are. Now, anybody who was in the OBS, like looking at the camera setup, they should have known pretty honestly, like right away, that there was a reflection of the light in the studio based off of these posters. That hurts the visual fidelity of the camera overall. So the shot is somewhat ruined. What's more is, again, between Erudite and Destiny, there's a, like, poster drawing, I don't know if it's an anime thing, of Destiny thinking about, like, some, like, gay heart or something. What the heck is that? It's, like, again, 35-year-old man, by the way. What is that? And um, at the end of the day, when we're looking at these posters, they're whack. I mean, these are, like, something that you'd get at Walmart for $5 each. And, I mean, it's freaking terrible. I mean, at some point, you'd expect some tapestry, like, those – uh. Those spinny things that teenage girls get because like honestly that's like a step above what these posters are paper thin reflective garbage and even with these like signages these little signs that say like exclamation point one two and three what are these even for i mean it literally doesn't even make sense and in regards to like the and i'm not a film student but i have a friend that does film and there's something called perspective if Destiny's smaller than erudite which is true i mean just look at the shoulder difference which is insane he's a grown man but anyway he should be on the right. He should be closer to the camera for the sake of just optics than for Erdite to be there. Not that I'm complaining because she's cute, but. Word, like, it seems like all the energy, online politics, was either with the Bernie Sanders left or with the MAGA Trump right. And if you were just kind of, if you felt like, well, I'm just a normal person who thinks Obama was pretty good and I wouldn't mind four more years of something like that. Okay, look at that. Okay, first of all, that sentence in and of itself, that spiel, is not horrible. Okay. Well, a normal person who voted for Clinton and thought Obama was good and that you needed another four years. Okay, first of all, you're an idiot, but I mean, that's not insane to think. But I mean, he says, I'm a normal person. Can we take a check of what this guy is? You're ginger, number one, first red flag. Second of all, overweight, dysgenic. Folks, he's a normal person. This is your average Obama Clinton voter. Bro, be like, uh, I think I could use another four years of mid. That's Obama. Really? Because the economy is getting a little bit better. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Obama. Anyway, so, I mean, this is like the whole issue. These people in this whole podcast, 50 minutes in, I don't have to get into the details, but I'll give you some. They're like, oh, we need more immigration. Legalize the illegals already here. A lot of them, a lot of them. That's insane to me. How could you see all these issues and say, let's get a little more of this and then remedy some of them with market solutions? That's not going to and caught it okay they can't i don't know how they could view the last several years of neoliberal consensus with like four years of trump in the middle and say like oh well actually it's not that bad what are you kidding me i mean it's literally insane i don't know what to even say at this point it's actually absurd i mean it's like if you were a tampa bay fan 
you're like, yeah, you know, nine, going nine and eight is really good. Actually, it's like, no, we want a Super Bowl. Go all the way in. What the hell is this? Bro's running the country like it's the Atlanta Falcons going seven and ten, like sub mid. Joe Biden sub mid. Are we kidding? Bernie was a big one in twenty sixteen for me because I felt like. I was just obsessed with lobbying and all the talking points. And I thought that there were like, these were the things that were destructive. It was like big business and capitalism and lobbying was destroying everything and blah, blah, blah. And I just have a very naive and crude view of politics. So I. Okay. Naive view of politics. Okay. So he's talking about being a Bernie Sanders supporter. Destiny is in 2016. Destiny is in his mid thirties. Okay. So take 35 minus eight. The guy was 27. Okay. I was naive about politics. Bro was a streamer since 2011 saying he was naive about politics in 2016. So you were streaming online following the news for, let's say, the better part of a decade. You're going to tell me that, oh, I didn't know what I was doing. I was a Bernie bro. I'm an idiot. Really? Also, you're in your late 20s. I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote for Bernie Sanders in the primary. How are you naive? Okay. I'm 20 years old. I already know where I'm at. You know, you don't need to check with me when I'm 27. Odds are that I'm actually plugged in. Okay. Turns out that I'm write about everything. It's not going to be like, oh, I was a Trump supporter at 20, but I changed my mind. Now I'm a Ron DeSantis. No, not going to happen, folks. Now, when it comes to destiny, so he's saying that he wasn't mature at 27. Get a freaking grip. Again, man child exposed. What the hell are you talking about? If you're 27 and you, and you haven't figured it out despite being perennially online, then you have no excuses. You're a midwit at best. Second of all, when it comes to normal people, construction worker, I can understand you come to grips and you become a Trump supporter in your 30s. Okay, well, maybe you weren't reading the news back then. I get it. But Destiny, who was on the internet, one of the first live streamers to begin with in the first place, I mean, he should know better. And he didn't. So, I mean, he's an idiot. Okay, I just skipped that part. But basically what he just said was that they had a subreddit called r slash neoliberals. Okay, imagine your first podcast episode is interviewing a guy who started a subreddit and his company derived from a thing called r slash neoliberal. First of all, cringe. Second, when it comes to uh, this guy, the redhead, I don't remember what his name is, Jeremiah Johnson, okay? Look, this guy literally says that Destiny was one of the first guests that he had on his popping podcast, so think about it. This guy, who's as autistic, I mean, he's about as autistic as you can possibly fathom, that all of a sudden, this guy, that you would imagine has never been on camera just looking at the guy, I mean, it looks like he's never seen the sun either. This guy allegedly had his own successful podcast. What the fuck? What? Where are the people paying for this? Where are the people watching this neoliberal garbage, man? And I thought NPR was bad and it is horrible. But I mean, those people at least still like don't stutter. I am. I mean, this is not using the camera, but I'm assuming they're not jetting around with their eyes everywhere like a bunch of ADHD uh, patients. But I mean, at the end of the day, this guy allegedly had a big podcast. How the fuck does that happen? What? Calls himself a libertarian Democrat, which is like, hallelujah. They're just amazing. So, okay. um, and bro, really? This is the entire problem with the destiny sort of thinking encapsulated in a five second clip. Bro went Jared Polis, the gay governor, Democrat governor of Colorado, is a libertarian Democrat. Hallelujah. What the fuck? Grown man, by the way. He says he's 36. Huh? Catch me doing hallelujah. Oh, what the hell is that, bro? He probably does that same face when he gets his tendies from his mother. I mean, this is just so bad, man. Now here the guest is going to glaze Destiny because I think he sent a couple hundred autistic people on SSRIs to go canvas for the first congressional district nominee incumbent uh, Democrat in a swing district. And basically, uh, he's going to love this as some incredible thing. Again, Destiny has over 700,000 subscribers and he got you know, maybe like one seven hundredth of his fan base to go in uh, door knock. Now, granted, is it really good for door knocking if a bunch of if a bunch of autists with ponytails pull up and said like, "Hey, do you want to vote for this congressman?" I don't know. If that's the best idea. I don't know if that's like actually brilliant. But uh, anyway, he's gonna laud him for it. Let's see what he City says. Council meeting and advocate for what you believe in. Just do something. And I, I love that you guys did that. That you actually get people out canvassing and and you know off of the internet we're just having arguments. Yeah. I don't know. Do you think that um. You think Biden and Trump are both going to be on the ballot? Bruh. So think about this, by the way. So Destiny mobilizes a couple hundred people, and that's the most these uh, leftist uh, people do. It's just get few people to go door knocking in one congressional district. I mean, that is literally like a uh, – Destiny did what one TPUSA college chapter would do, and this is supposed to be laudable, by the way. I mean, this just shows how down bad the grassroots uh, activism is for the Biden people. I mean, have you guys ever gotten your door knocked by a Biden person? I really doubt it. And by the way – at least in Tucson and I think in Maricopa County, Phoenix, you, I mean, Southern Arizona, they're paying 28 an hour for door knockers for the Democrats, which is probably beating the Republicans out by a couple dollars at least, which shows that they're more desperate. It tells you a lot.
Do you think Biden and Trump are both going to be on the ballot? Yes. This coming election? You think it'll be Trump? Yes. And you think it'll be Biden? Yes. I think that there's a lot of free money in prediction markets that you can go bet right now that it, uh, you know, you can still get like 80 cents on a dollar, I think, or something like that. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's like free money. Do you? Do you think it'll be Biden and Trump? I do, but I was, um, because I got called on to, um, do that. What a lame question. Do you think it'll be Biden and Trump? I mean, obviously. What? I still, it's kind of hard sometimes when I look at him. Well, like, I think it's going to be in place of Biden or uh, Trump. I can understand it would probably be Nikki Haley if it's not Trump. You don't think it'll be Haley? Who do you think is going to step in between? It, the, there's no good answer to that. The Republican Party is in shambles. Right I agree. Now. Like, that's true. Copium, copium. You are motherfucking coping, dude. Come on. What? Really? Really? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The Republican Party is in shambles. Meanwhile, Donald Trump has like two thirds of the vote. Against an opponent, you fucking ignoramus. I mean, like, seriously, what the hell is wrong with destiny, folks? Folks, Trump is lapping Nikki Haley easily everywhere. And that's with that, you know, like this whole like, oh, I'm a pariah, January 6th, all this like crazy stuff. Okay, even with all that, he's still the king of the party. How the hell is it in shambles? The RNC chairwoman, Ronna McDaniel, steps down on the behalf of Trump for a lackey of his. How is that unstable? That is like a dub. That's a dub, bro. That's like saying, uh, you know, your sex life is in shambles because like you got a girl to commit to you and you're marrying her. What? How is that unstable? Because things are changing. Yeah, for the better. Trump is capitalizing on control of the party and he's winning the primary sooner and more decisively than even predicted by the people that are anti-Trump, which is to say, obviously, that you know, the party is a lot more together than it was before. And when we look at the polls, folks, when we look at the polls, the most accurate poll from 2022 uh, shows Trump up by 4% in the popular vote, talking about like, oh, the party's in shambles, says Destiny. Cope more. You fuck. Bro can't even grow a beard right. I mean, look at how jagged there's a literal fucking little lamb chop, like just missing. And this side does have hair. But I mean, it's pathetic. Destiny's coping because his guy, Dementia Sleepy Joe, is going to lose. And I cannot wait to see it happen. Again, this is another problem with the class of destiny neoliberal acolyte. Okay, so this archetype person, first of all, is below average in looks, is pale, has never seen the sun, has some sort of like SSRI benefits because of some sort of autism they have. I mean, I mean, you can just see it on the screen there. Uh, and they're also like 110 IQ. They're a little smarter than the average like redneck, but they're definitely not intellectuals. And so they look at data because, you know, again, midwits don't look at data at all. They're disinterested, but these people are a step above. So they will look and read studies, but they're stupid because they'll just read it for face value. They don't account for bias. They don't actually extrapolate anything that's charismatic or there's no content there. So let's see the example. I'm lining up a ting up on a fucking, uh, you know, a T-ball. So anyway, I'm setting this up. Let's go. If you'd like Kamala Harris, who is by far the most likely if Biden drops out, she polls worse than him against Trump. Yeah. It's, it's funny because Nikki Haley polls better than Trump. And so it's kind of confusing why they don't nominate her if they want to win. It's because it's cold, cold personality. But again, they cared about winning. They would nominate Haley. But if Democrats... See what a douche this guy is again. Um, I'm totally smart because I own some, some business for d uh, Democratic consulting that nobody knows about. Okay, thank you. Bravo, Jeremiah. But anyway, the point being is that when we're talking about this... He says confidently, oh, you know, Nikki Haley's pulling better than Trump, so they should just nominate her. Bro, no, 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 obviously not. Anybody who follows Republican politics knows that Nikki Haley would lose a shit ton of supporters over Trump. And Destiny literally just said that if Trump were the nominee, that Trump would vote, th uh, would go third party and that those people would vote for him and then make Biden win when Haley's the Republican nominee. He Jeremiah concedes that whole premise and then goes on to be a douche and contradict the whole thing Destiny said by saying, well, if they were smart, they would nominate Haley. Well, I mean, according to Destiny, that would be horrible for the Republicans, you fucking idiots. Oh, my God. What? Huh? Again, broke college student W. What the hell is wrong with these midwits, bro? 110 IQ be like, oh, I'm so smart. Oh, my God. This RCP poll, this Nate Silver poll on 538 says that actually uh, uh, that, uh, that Nikki Haley polls 3% better than Trump. Not true, bro. Not going to bear out in reality. Clearly, common sense. That's assuming every single Trump supporter would vote for Nikki Haley. That just obviously doesn't make sense, brother. About winning, they would nominate Haley. But if Democrats Ooh. cared, Haley would, I think, if she got it somehow, um, Haley polls just clear like 10 points better than Trump against Biden. Okay, okay. First of all, first of all, first of all, first of all, folks, first of all, that is asinine. One nominee polls 10 points better than the other. I mean, that just in a polarized election does not make sense, bro. I mean, it would literally have to be like the nominee's Hitler and the other nominee's Jesus Christ. I mean, like how the hell would it be a 10-point difference in the general election? That doesn't make sense. But even beyond that, again, this guy knows nothing about fucking electoral politics. Let's get it straight. Third, 
when it comes to Jeremiah Johnson, he says confidently and smugly, this bastard. He says, oh, yeah, Nikki Haley pulls 10 points better than Trump. Bro, I mean, how the fuck? Okay, first of all, if Nikki Haley, who's not a special person by any means, is just a generic Republican at that point, at best, if not a neocon, okay, Nikki Haley pulls 10 points better than Trump, which means that she'd obviously beat Biden by a lot. How is Biden a good candidate? This guy's going to support Biden and like unironically say like, oh, he's got a good chance of winning. How the fuck is Nikki Haley beating Biden by 15 if Biden's a decent candidate? Huh? The f Again, make it all make sense, folks. The copium, the mental gymnastics, they're like Simone Biles or whatever. If she actually were to participate in the games and not cry, okay? This is pathetic. Huge flub up by genius Stephen Bunnell the second, I think it is. Okay, let's see. Pushing of that. Him aligning with uh, Sheriff Ar Ar Arpaio, Arpaio in yeah. Texas. And that- Whoa! Sheriff Joe! Merrick Kupak. I mean, he's a Phoenix legend. Sheriff Joe. Folks, he's Arizonan, brother. I'm from here, brother. Bro says, from Texas. So, I and again, this is a nitpick. But then again, he tries to nitpick the Jeremiah guy off stream. I didn't record this part. But basically, he's like- um, um, actually, what was Trump's first foray into politics? And then, I mean, the guy, the, the redhead idiot says, well, the Central Park Five, which was what, like in the 80s? Okay, well, that wasn't it. Destiny was saying like, oh, it's the birth certificate controversy from like 2011. Okay. So then he tries to be a smart ass and then says Sheriff Joe Arpaio, who's known for the desert, uh, penal, ca uh, basically putting the illegals in the desert with pink underwear in Phoenix, obviously. Uh, that he was from Texas. I mean, just like, again, so be Captain Obvious and then meanwhile, not been so smart. Now, this is going to be a key moment of destiny level sophistry. Again, he talks fast. I got him on 1.5 speed because that's the way I roll. Uh, usually two speed. This guy's too fast though sometimes, but he's going to talk really fast and say something really mundane and stupid and then hope that you didn't catch it. Time is kind of like the, it was the R, um, the Donald subreddit, and then it was the QAnon stuff on 4chan, and then it was the- So he's saying that Trump caught wind prior to the election in 2016 because of the birth certificate controversy about Obama not being a citizen, which, okay, fine, one, okay. And then he says the R slash the Donald, that wasn't a thing prior to him running in 2015. Clearly, you fucking idiot. Second of all, the other thing I wanted to mention was QAnon. QAnon was not before 2016. What? QAnon existed before Trump? No, it didn't. Why? Why would QAnon exist about a guy who's not even running for president? What? So again, he says these things hoping that the person that's reading this, popping their Adderall, is not paying attention. Meanwhile, I point it out and it's like, what? The explosion of like the online Facebook groups that all of that conspiratorial stuff and then all of that Trump stuff and then all of the hatred for the foreign policy. What a stupid, the condescending, neoliberal elitist idiot this guy is. So he's saying, oh, this whole Trump thing is just an artifice of conspiracy theories what so he thinks like the eddie bravo vote was what got trump over the hill no that wasn't it brother it was basically uh a malcontent with the people that were working in the steel industries these people in the fracking fields these people in michigan that went decades without a fucking job because of nafta and other stupid deals and they went out and they wanted protectionist policies they wanted tariffs they wanted china to pay their fair share uh instead of uh going around with no taxes levied on them while our industries are suffering in the country that we live in and destiny this fucking presumptuous ba bastard that's ever worked in a factory hasn't worked a field before says oh no it's conspiracy theories it couldn't be some well-intentioned suburban people or rural people in michigan that's the people that voted trump in silly it's not fucking conspiracy theories if it were conspiracy theories that were leading trump to victory in 2016 then you would have seen Montana, which is full of these rednecks that believe in UFOs. That would be like what made Trump go over the edge in 2016. No, it was the swing states. It was Florida. It was Wisconsin. It was Pennsylvania. Places where there's hard workers, swing states. Buddy, it had virtually nothing to do with QAnon or Pizzagate. It had nothing to do with that, folks. Uh, and then you can throw in like the intellectual dark web there a lot of them yeah. like migrated into Trump and then, Amer and then yeah. Republicans finally understanding why some people don't like big business but it just happened because they got woke and yeah. like, well wait maybe unions and protections and maybe these people do need to be broken up I think that Trump was just at the perfect epicenter of all that happening so when people try to duplicate Trump copium cop so again it can't be that Trump was a Chad you know like billionaire with a hot uh, Slovenian wife it isn't that like he has charisma confidence a gut intelligence that doesn't need book smarts to accentuate it to be this president no it's that he just landed in the right spot it can't be that half the country voted for him like legitimately and love him no it's got to be some other bullshit oh it's got to be the Russians it's got again cope on cope on cope 
himself. They look too much at the qualities that he has and not the fact that he just happened to slot in at the perfect time for the person he was. Yeah. Well, so here literal fucking again, I can't use the C word too much, but Jesus Christ, isn't this apparent, folks? Oh, it was just at the perfect time. Oh, what a victim you are, Destiny. Here's um, you want to know my favorite uh piece of trivia about Donald Trump? No. Oh, come on, oh, okay, okay, please. <laughs> yeah. So when Donald Trump ran against Hillary Clinton, and you asked people not who they were going to vote for, mm -hmm. but who is more moderate, Trump right. or Clinton? Trump was viewed as more moderate. More people said Trump is, is more moderate than opposed to Hillary Clinton. Probably was. True. And yeah, this is like, I mean, it, it always depends. Moderate is such a shaky word, and you mm -hmm. define it however you want, and what do you count as left wing and moderate and right wing? But like, that would, I think, shock, just stun a lot of people on the Democratic side that anyone could think Donald Trump was more moderate. But it's because he was doing it in a way where like, you know, the... The Republican Party consensus for a long time had been we need to, you know, cut Medicare and cut Social Security gotcha. and, you know, do all this, cut blah, blah, blah. And, and Donald Trump was like, I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. Let's, I love Social Security. Let's make it even better. Let's make it bigger. Let's have triple the Medicare because he, he didn't know anything about it. So yeah. he's just, he like heard the applause when people were like, he said he would protect Medicare. Okay, I'll just keep saying that. You know, and he, he called himself the king of debt. He had no commitment to like Chad, cut the budget deficit. Let's go. And serious suffer. Conservative. Suffer. Suffer. Like suffer, you fucking autist. Yeah. I don't care about the debt. Let's go. We will protect Medicare. We're going to make Social Security so huge. You're going to love it. It won't even look the same. I'm going to make it so big and beautiful. That's fucking hilarious. These sourpusses are like, oh my God, oh my God, oh, I'm going to die, bro. Deal with it and stuff. Again, more nitwit, neoliberal, dogmatic nonsense coming up right here on a plate, folks. Let's let's see what this fucking genius says. It's, it's tough to win three elections in a row. It doesn't happen very much. It doesn't happen very much in American politics. That, so we, one party holds the presidency for eight years, right? And then you also get, you know, just a continuation of that. The last time it happened, I think. So they're coping about Hillary Clinton losing to Trump by saying, it's really rare when you get a third term out of the same party. Look, it's rare because of just like statistical circumstance. I mean, obviously just to have a coin flip on, the, on heads three times in a row is super slim, relatively speaking. That being said though, I mean, Obama, you know, he sucked. Thank you. Thanks, Obama. But at the end of the day, in 2016, the economy was, uh, you know, positively trending, uh, at least at the micro level. And then when you're looking at uh, foreign policy, I mean, it was all, you know, it was all right. So, I mean, it wasn't horrible. So, I mean, any decent Democrat would have won. And actually, I'm of the opinion that Joe Biden in 2016 would have beat Trump anyway. Uh, but so Hillary Clinton was such a bad candidate and Trump was so awesome in some facets that Clearly, they broke up that third streak of Obama. So you basically got Trump in uh, after two terms of Obama. So that's the reason why they lost. But let's see how he spins it. I think it was Reagan winning twice. And then George Bush the first got, uh, got a kind of a third term of Reagan. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember, George Bush the first didn't get elected as saying, I'm going to be even more Reagan than Reagan was. You wouldn't have to. Why break something that, that isn't broken? What do you mean? He's, uh, Reagan was a super popular president, did better in his reelection than he did in 1980. And you're going to tell me, oh, well. I mean, this guy didn't run to the right of Reagan. Why would he have to? What? He got elected because he was seen as like the more moderate influence on Reagan. He was the- That literally doesn't make sense, dog. That is stupid as fuck. This is establishmentarian, Hill, capital DC sort of thinking. I know exactly what he's talking about. Oh, you know, we had Reagan, who's like this like far right guy, which is not even true. And that, you know, the people that loved Reagan only elected the next Republican because he was more moderate and diet Reagan. What? That makes no sense, folks. That literally does not even compute. That's like saying, well, you know, we went from like Aaron Rodgers and we supported uh, Jordan Love because he'd be like a more tempered version of Aaron. No, 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 no. If you have a successful Hall of Fame quarterback, you want more of the same production. You don't want a more low key like, well, let's run the ball this time. No, fuck it. We're going balls to the wall. If you can actually get this sort of like prodigy level production from the young guy, we're going to do it. And so when we're talking about Reagan, if the American – okay, okay, okay. Just to dumb it down for these people. If Ronald Reagan could run for a third term, would he win in 1988? The answer is, of course, of course, of course, of course. So this whole argument, oh, George H.W. Bush only won on the basis that he was the moderating influence on Reagan is not even true because Reagan was a popular president when he left office. You bozo. What the fuck? What the fuck? The moderate Republican, whereas Reagan was more in the conservative wing, and that's how he was viewed. He was a walk backwards from Reagan. When Hillary ran, you know, and that's not even true. And in fact, the reason why he lost 1992 in part was because he said, read my lips. There will be no new taxes. That is a right wing position. When he went back on the position and raised taxes on every tax income bracket, what happened? What happened? He lost. 
to Bill Clinton who ran to the right of the other people in the Democratic primary. Let's get fucking real, folks. What is wrong with this guy? Oh, you know, he only won the Republican uh, third term of Reagan because he was more moderate, but he lost to a more Republican version of the Democratic establishment in 1992 because of... <gasps> he was fucking wrong. Jeremiah is fucking wrong, folks. Put up, like... Because of Joe the, Biden. I think I think Joe Biden, Biden, Biden had recently. Um, I think his son had recently died in 2016, and he did not so he want, to, want to. Run. He didn't want to run. And he. This is Cop, by the way, folks. So they're saying that Joe Biden didn't run in 2016 because his uh, son Bo died of Bo. Uh, sorry, <laughs> that was a Joe Biden moment. His son Bo, his oldest son, I think, died of uh, brain cancer or something like this. Okay, in 2015, folks. To be completely honest, he didn't run, if you read into it, if you read books about the 2016 campaign, is because Hillary Clinton already had it lined up. She had it lined up from 2008 to 2016. She was planning. In fact, she was Secretary of State under Obama for at least four years before, I think, Samantha Power. So, I mean, she was already lined up prior to the Benghazi debacle to be the president heir apparent to Obama. That was the whole stratagem, okay? Why do you think that Bill Clinton was helping out Obama in 2010 and 2012 campaigning for him? Because the Clintons knew that if they helped Obama, that Obama would have basically cucked Biden for a term and made Hillary run instead. And that's exactly what happened. And honestly, for Joe Biden to be too morally like, oh, I'm so pious. I'm going to let my son like rot and I'm going to like, uh, you know, cry for a year while Hillary runs for president. I'm such a great dad. Meanwhile, Hunter Biden's addicted to meth and all this other garbage. Okay, like, are we really mentally there? And what, what's more, again, uh, Joe Biden decides to run in 2020 for president. Meanwhile, he already has dementia. If you look at his uh, initial campaign ad in 2019, I saw this in Las Vegas, like September of 2019 or something, or even before then. He, frankly, was already toast then. So, again, a guy who's so morally great and, like, excellent that he would forego running for president, although being the vice president under Obama, who's somewhat popular in 2016, because he's such a great guy, he sat it out, okay, according to these nitwits. Now, all of a sudden, oh, in 2020, when he has dementia and he is self-aware about that, obviously, that he lost his step, now he wants to run for president because, he's oh, he's a great guy. Really? Come on, man. Are you fucking kidding me? So naive these people are. All right, folks, so I wrapped that up already off screen, okay? That was torturous. I mean, if you really need to fall asleep, you know, you could crush up melatonin and you could show somebody a picture and play this podcast for them and be the same difference. Take either one. Um, anyway, with the, you know, this whole thing, Bridges Podcast, I mean, they do this whole setup and I mean, it's kind of pathetic because it just doesn't really work out and it becomes somewhat of like an embarrassing thing. And even looking at their description, which you don't have to watch, I'll just, you know, take my word for it. But they put, they put those little postcards saying like exclamation point one, two, and three. These only mean press them in the chat to get the social media of those three different people. What the hell kind of tacky stuff is that? Like who really cares? Um, and I mean, it's just beyond stupid. Now, this uh, podcast was super boring. And I mean, if you were watching this at all, you can tell that I was tearing apart. These neoliberal talking, the talking points are just ridiculous. And I mean, it's just off base. And so... The 110 IQ white podcast is not going to cut it, folks. I mean, it just doesn't look good. I love Kyla, but come on, brother. The nerdy pretty girl needs to get it together. Lock the fuck in, okay? Lock in. See y'all in the next video. Adios.